I wanted to check that. I don't think it will get a full Discovery Monday. That's why I kept it for today. But this is, we've talked about it in the past. It's basically an AI that helps you create and generate a page in automated and that you can copy paste that in Figma. So that's interesting. As Denny said earlier, he tried it with a blog page and that gave you a cart checkout screen. I don't know. I want to be specific in what we want to try now. And I have a feeling that I'm going to try something full stony. So just to see how it, it builds something. So I want the, I want the detail page of video streaming platform. That seems like a good idea. Um, UIZard is good if you know how to use it, but you need a lot of setup, but it's good. But you need to start with something specific. I rented about rented. I had a rent about it because some people on YouTube and Twitter and TikTok were saying there is this new thing that just came out called UIZard. And I was like, yeah, 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 it came out in 2014. I have a receipt. I've been using them since 2014. You have my emails in my inbox since 2014. Not just came out. Maybe not 2014, 2016, but it's the same shit. It's been, it's been old. And so main color is purple. I don't know how much detail I can get. I, you know what? Let's see if that's good. One of the things that is interesting is in the free version, you get 200 credits per month, which apparently is about 20 designs, right? So the Right now it took 30 credits, 10, 10, 10. So we'll see if that's good. I'm already scared by the thumbnails. I wish it could. That's the goal. Technically, to me, as a product designer, something that I want the AI to do is to, for me to say, this is the component library that we have. This is what you need to use. That's it. Use that. All right. I want to see this one. Last one. The behavior is also pretty simple. I know you can't see shit because it's from very far away, but you have the seasons. You one, two, three, four, right there. You have three tabs as well. At the top, they are related to specifics of the show. And this is a profile page. Oh, it's still working. Sorry. Sorry, it's still working. The fact that it kept the purple is pretty good. The preview of the episodes. So this is really a profile, user profile. This, this is crazy weird. Cool. Yeah, this is bad. Good to know. The second one, this is pretty good. It's basically what we did, but we didn't do that. You may also like an extra what we did on stony is stacked on the main page so that you always see them you don't need to navigate through a new file or new like sub tab to get access to it so that kind of makes sense we're getting basically that the episodes are here and then we have subsection so that's pretty good i would still have the thumbnail of the episode b and then this one is it's the same thing but they have more episodes displayed and specifically they have like really small thumbnails that you can display way more but it's the same behavior it's the same tabs you have the my list the trailer the thing so it's the exact same shit the header is the same on both sides it's the header that we've been seeing on galileo for the past six months of previews so wasn't expecting something different which in the second design the tv show cover image is on the left with the title genre rating and play button on the right which if you know what left and right means that's on the left title rating button that i know i that makes no sense to me but apparently that makes Makes no sense to them either. This is centered. And then the third variant, the position of the cover image, show title, general rating at center, which is true, but it's the same as the previous one. So anyways, what I want to do now is copy to Figma just to see what that does. So it's been copied to my clipboard. And now I'm going to just drop that at the center of the fucking page and see what we have and what we get. What is the structure? So we have an auto layout frame, first of all, better than the guy on the video. Good thing. Then you have a depth zero frame zero which is also an auto layout frame that contains another frame is just one frame and now we have two frames okay so we have three levels of depth for no fucking reason interesting it's followed by the 
header, that makes sense, which is also an auto layout frame, containing multiple frames, god damn it, all right, and then underneath that, we have the content frame that contains specifics of each element. So it is interesting the way that they have splitted their frames with depth and frame name. I don't know why, but whatever. And then the copy pasting gave me the sub selector underneath each of my tabs, which we don't really have here. We lost the colors, so that's uh, that's good to know. The header is good, but we gained a heavy white divider that is really subtle right there. And then the bottom section is the same. Yeah, cool. So that's pretty good overall, like for copy paste to go faster if you have no ID, that is that is pretty good. So now, now I'm just going to do that. We need a TV for this streaming platform. I'm expecting it to, so I was about to say I'm expecting it to maintain the chat, but apparently they have limitation, even though it's the same screen. They said no. They said I'm, I can only do mobile and desktop, even though technically a desktop is a screen and a TV UI is a screen with just different rules. So let's, uh, we need the settings. Let's see if that works. So I'm building on the same chat to see if it has the reference. It doesn't. Let's say, yeah, let's say that. So the thing that I'm looking at right now is even though I'm asking questions to their chat GPT wrapper, it didn't take coins from me until it started generating things. So that's good. If you just want to ask the AI chat GPT behind it to just think with you in text without generating any images so that you ensure that the prompt that you send is exactly what you need. That's a pretty good thing. But then here, what I'm seeing right there is like this and this is the exact same fucking page. So the only difference, the first one has more content than the other two. And I'm expecting them to tell me that one of them is a line right and the other one is a line left or full screen or different. So James, hi, welcome on in. How is it? It is your first time here. How are you? Who are you? How did you find the stream? All of that, the usual questions. If you have design questions, feel free to ask. I've been a designer for 17 and working with devs for 14. So I can help if needed. So the first design showcase a clean layout with separated section for account detail, subscription plan, blah, 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 blah. The sections are arranged in a vertical list on the left side. It's centered, enabling easy navigation and each corresponding settings is displayed on the right. Each section account playback notification is listed on the left side and each corresponding settings, email and password is obviously on the right side. The second design, the setting page features a tabbed interface at the top, allowing the user to switch between different preference categories. The main area of the page presents settings relevant to the selected tab with collapsible menus for organizing multiple options. The page used purple as the accent color. Obviously, we have playback, notification, something else as tabs at the top of the screen. Because we are currently on playback, we can't see the email notification settings because it's underneath. God damn it. And in the third variant, use a hard based layout to organize user preferences, settings into distinct block for each category. This approach facilitates a quick overview and direct interaction with each settings. So here, which is the exact same page as here, the playback and notifications are inside of cards to help the user understand where things are. God damn it. So now that we have tested that out, it was pretty good on some things, but I feel like the setting page being such a repeating element inside of their training model of things that they have trained their builder on is most likely extremely mobile. I'm saying that because these toggles are very, and then the prompts are just wrong, like really straight up wrong. So this told us, the first one told us that we had a sidebar on the left side that selected specific elements, which is what we have on the design of No Mercy right now. The settings are basically a sidebar on the left side. And when you select something, you have different elements on the right, but that's not what we see here. And then on these ones, they are telling us that they have created a tab section at the top that technically contains all that, but in tabs. So they are picking back up that behavior and putting it at the top, but it's not there. Yeah, I think they shouldn't. I think I agree with that. They shouldn't necessarily explain what they've done, but also I feel like 
one of the potential ids that they have for displaying the prompts generated would be for me if i learn how to prompt for that app specifically i can then use some of the elements that i'm i can see here to see the detail the level of details that they have in their prompts to get the specific results so maybe if i were to do that it would work better we'll see but overall i think it could become a very good first draft option but i also feel like in the current state of how ChatGPT works, the ability for me to ask regular ChatGPT to generate something with Midjourney is has a greater result than this. The only benefit that I can see from this, this app give me a copy paste Figma file. So I can take the elements that they gave me, paste that in my Figma file and then edit it to fix some of the issues that is going to have in the beginning, which I can't do that with my journey that's a plus to speed but so far that they have their secondary thing that i didn't see they have their image to you which i'm guessing if you have generated something with my journey directly you could potentially get do i have that i think i have some weird ai generated images yeah i do let me see if i can do that because if i could generate an image on one side and then auto transfer can i just drop the fucking thing right there where is my Thing. this one can i do that i can cool no prompt can i do that no let's see hi good morning good morning so yeah that's uh, this is interesting ish so the text works holy fuck and that is shit good all right cool so image to image basically gave me what they have been generating for the past six months this is one of their basic templates and nothing is coming from that initial image that i just dropped in if you keep that in your head i'm going into explore for mobile you will probably see some very similar layouts compared to what i just generated but they have they really have one singular fucking templates and that's all they use so this is bullshit i don't like it it is a header yes i think it's a repositioning of sections but yeah it is technically like you have the settings buttons and the same name and the same menu on the left it's the first version that they are releasing to the public and for first version, the text has a pretty good outcome in some situations and a pretty bad outcome in some situations. The main issue that I see is the fact that their description doesn't really match for a second with what they are telling us they have generated. You can't tell me that the cover is on the left and the title is on the right when the cover is centered and the title is on the left. Like that, you can't do that. Could do that. Uh, anyway, it could be good in the pan in the future, but for now, it's free. Use your credits. That's what I would say. Use your credits every month to play with it. The strangest thing you generate, the better I was about to say the better the outcome. No, the better the training will be for that tool. So if you think that could be really useful for you later. Oh, I thought you would about to drop on it, but no. Maybe use that. I don't know. 